Birds like this poor unfortunate gang gang cockatoo here are all too common around the world at the moment. It's lost many of its feathers. It has a disease called citizine beak and feather disease. Now citizine of course means parrots. This disease affects parrots and it's been known in the budgerigar for maybe over a hundred years. Typically in the budgie you'll notice the feathers that the bird needs to fly with break off. They're often referred to in budgerigars as French malt budgies or indeed just as runners because they can't fly. The irony is that whilst the disease has been around for a long time, it's only in the last few years that scientists have begun to understand it. We recognised it as a being a virus infection about five years ago, uh, and that was a as a result of, of uh, fairly straightforward pathological examination of, of the uh, feathers, affected feathers, and uh, other tissues in the bird. The major sign of beak and feather disease, predictably enough, is a loss of feathers, particularly the tail feathers and the flight feathers on the wing. Budgerigars seem less seriously affected by the disease than some other species of parrots and don't often die. However, many of the others, like galahs and cockatoos, do. The main reason is that the virus affects the immune system of the bird by destroying cells in the major immune organs like the thymus, leaving the bird susceptible to other infections. Now, we've seen this obviously in captive birds. What about in the wild? Well, it, it certainly exists in, in uh, some species in the wild. It, it's quite common in sulphur-crested cockatoos in eastern Australia. It's common in galahs in some places. It occurs here in wild galahs in, in Perth. It occurs quite commonly here in wild 28 parrots. Definitely occurs in wild uh, lorikeets in New South Wales, uh, king parrots. A whole range. We've had uh, examples of uh, in corellas from the Kimberleys and sulphur-crested cockatoos from Northern Territory. Um, so, you know, really, I think it could occur in any species of wild bird. In addition to feather loss, birds like cockatoos, galahs, corellas and gangangs also develop problems with their beaks and claws. Beaks at first seem to grow with an abnormal rapidity, and then the whole beak can drop off and the bird is left with nothing but a stub of bone. Stephanie Toomer's pet galah is two and a half years old and contracted the disease while still very young. As you can see, his beak has changed shape completely. Galah's beak should be a lot wider across the bridge and, of course, a lot shorter. He's due for another clip. But he doesn't really look anything like a galah now. If you're buying a bird from a breeder or a pet shop, how can you tell whether it's a good proposition or not? Well, obviously, if it's got bad feathers, there's a bad proposition right from the word go. Uh, if, uh, if you're buying a, a cockatoo, um, one of the earliest signs of this disease is a, lot, a lack of powder in the feathers. So if, you, if the bird that you're looking at doesn't have powder in its feathers and has a, uh, a dirty or a, a greasy appearance, then you can um, be fairly sure there's something wrong with it. And uh, in, most likely it has uh, beak and feather disease. I just bought this bird from a, an average pet shop. So I expect that um, all the other baby galahs there would have had the same disease and I feel sorry for the owners. One important way of controlling the spread of the disease is to thoroughly clean, disinfect or burn the nests between clutches of birds. However, as yet no vaccine has been developed and probably won't be in the near future. The usual treatment for virus diseases is to try to keep the patient as healthy as possible so that the natural defence mechanisms of the body can regain control and hopefully destroy the virus. Unfortunately, at this stage, we simply don't know what effect this disease will have on large populations of wild birds.